This is London. It was an announcement which stunned the nation. It is with the greatest sorrow that we make the following announcement. It was announced from Sandringham at 10.45 today, February the 6th, 1952, that the king, who retired to rest last night in his usual health, passed peacefully away in his sleep earlier this morning. Unknown to the British people and to members of his family, King George VI had been suffering from lung cancer. His death at the age of only 56 was a shocking blow to a country which was still struggling to recover from the traumas of the Second World War. The heart of the nation stops. The flags lower in tribute over the mother of parliaments, high over Big Ben. The flag is low as the news spreads. The king is dead. The king, our king, is no more with us. Swift from the press, the news flows to the farthest corners of our island. In our hearts we feel this cannot be. On the day the king died, Alastair Donald Campbell was ten. He was at school. A Frenchman, a veteran of World War I, was taking a French class. Halfway through that class, um, one of the st other staff came in and whispered something into the teacher's ear. Suddenly we were conscious that this grown man sitting in front of us was crying, which for a child of our generation and in the 1950s, you didn't often see grown men, especially in public, expressing emotion of that kind. Um, he recovered himself. He slowly walked to the chalkboard and wrote the words, Le roi est mort, vive la reine. And that was how I learnt the news of King George VI's death. At the moment of George VI's death, the throne passed to his elder daughter, Elizabeth. She was in Kenya at the time. On learning the news, she returned to London to be greeted by the then Prime Minister, Sir Winston Churchill. The new Queen was just 25 years old. On her shoulders rested the country's hopes and expectations. One of the things we were conscious of was that the new, the new Queen heralded, if you like, a new Elizabethan era, but that she was also very young for a monarch to succeed at that time. But despite her youth, the Queen accepted her destiny. At her accession and then at her coronation, she committed her life to the service of Britain and the other countries of which she is monarch. And 60 years after she came to the throne, that commitment remains undimmed. <laughs> Nicholas Witchell, BBC News. As word of the King's death reached the people of the Norfolk countryside, Small groups gathered outside the gates of Sandringham, silent and subdued. To them, he was more than a king. To these people, he was the squire. And the flag flew at half-mast on the village church near Sandringham where he died, just as it did at Westminster Abbey, where he was crowned. In city streets, as in suburban homes, the nation mourned. Speaking for them all, the Prime Minister said that the news of the King's death struck a deep and solemn note in our lives, which, as it resounded far and wide, stilled the clatter and traffic of 20th century life in many lands, and made countless millions of human beings pause and look around them. To Buckingham Palace turned the thoughts of many of the people. And as on the joyous occasions in the years of his reign, they gathered outside the palace gates. But now they talked in hushed tones about their memories of King George VI. As in the capital, 
so throughout the realm. In Cardiff, flags flew at half-mast from the civic centre and on many other buildings in the city. In Edinburgh, the scene was the same. On all buildings in the Scottish capital, flags at half-mast. The roof of the coach opens of the land door, and now the Roy and Ulster King of Arms, Sir Gerald Wollaston, will rise to read the proclamation. Commonwealth, with other principal gentlemen of quality, with the Lord Mayor, Aldermen and citizens of London, do now hereby with one voice and consent of tongue and heart publish and proclaim that the high and mighty Princess Elizabeth Alexandra Mary is now, <coughs> by the death of our late sovereign of happy memory, become Queen Elizabeth II. By the grace of God, Queen <coughs> of this realm and of all her other realms and territories, head of the Commonwealth, Defender of the faith, <coughs> to whom her liegees do acknowledge all faith and constant obedience with hearty and humble affection, beseeching God by whom kings and queens do reign to bless the royal princess Elizabeth II with long and happy years to reign over us. Given at St. James's Palace, the 6th day of February, in the year of our Lord, 1952. <laughs>
The Queen! Hip, hip! hip, hip. I must have come on the bus from school and seen people standing on the pavement in Kensington High Street because I lived in Bayswater and I used to go to school in Chelsea. So I would have, I used to go along Kensington High Street and I saw all these people and I realised why they were waiting. They were waiting for the royal car to come past. I don't think in those days she, there was Heathrow, I think she used North Salt Airport. So I got off and I stood with them and, and when she went past, it was really very solemn and very sad. Um, yes, there was silence, you know, people, people were very sad about it. And she came past and she sort of acknowledged the people at the side of the road, even in her you know, grief. We noticed that the stewards were um, talking together, sort of whispering, and then our teach two teachers went over to them. They called them over, I think, and they said, they came back with very long faces and said, um, We're very, it's a very sad day, we're sorry to say that the king has died, so that we'll all be going back to school, uh, and then you will probably be sent home. So um, we thought, oh, you, you know, we, we were quite sad because uh, being 13, we'd grown up with being the king being the king and the queen being the queen, the queen mother, um, as she became. Um, so we went back to school and then were sent home. And I, th I th this was about 10 or 11 in the morning uh, because, of course, he died in the early hours of that morning. So the news would have got out by then. And about that time, I suppose, Princess Elizabeth was eventually being told because they they could not get through to treetops the the phones were not working properly and they they couldn't believe the news they didn't believe it at first